Hi, I finally got to assemble all the legs and attach them to the new frame. I also printed this cover for the top and another one for the bottom, which has these brackets at the back to hold the battery. I used some tape to add a little padding and as you can see it holds the battery tight in place. With these, the mechanical part of the hexapod is complete and you can download all the parts from the link in the description. The new design has many improvements over the previous one. For example, it has more usable space inside the body even though it is about 1 inch narrower. I think it's a good option for your hexapod even if you want to use a different controller like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino. Before moving forward, we need some naming conventions. Here are the labels for the six legs, and these are the labels for the 18 servos that I will use. Pay attention that the left and the right sides are relative to the direction of the robot. This is the main servo controller board that I'm using, which is the one that connects to the phone and the battery, and has 18 channels for the 18 servos. Follow these labels to connect the servos to the right channels on the board. Other than the main board, I also have a second board to read the sensor data, which is chained to the main board with a serial connection. You basically need to connect these two groups of connectors. For more details, visit the manufacturer's website. On the second board, the first six channels are inputs for the touch sensors. Channels 6 and 7 are for current and voltage inputs, and channel 11 is a digital output that controls the servo power line via a relay. I will show you how to calibrate and adjust these input values later. This is all the components wired up except the servos and the touch sensors. And this is how it fits inside the robot. Also never forget the main kill switch. I connected all the wires and everything seems to be working as expected. I wanted to design the top in a way that can hold different sizes of smartphones. So instead of fitting it to a particular phone, I just made a flat surface on the top and going to use these stretchy rubber bands to hold the phone. Which works for now, but I should find a better solution later. If you have a better idea, let me know in the comments. This concludes the actual build of the hexapod. In the next video, which is the last part, I will tell you how to install the software and configure all the settings. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.